So in this next section, she wonders, you know, given the uh, negative consequences of reductionist worldview, uh, why would anyone adopt it? Right. right. That's, what's yeah. the appeal to if it? It all right? just lends to chaos. Yeah. Cool. And so she says, Paul gives us a clue, right, in, in Romans 1, right? And the idea here is that the... Um, you know, now, uh, Paul, Paul argues the existence of beings with the capacity to reason, love, plan, and choose is evidence that the first cause that created them must have at least the same capacities, right? The cause must be sufficient to produce the effect. The origin of personal beings is best explained by a personal being, right? right? That's the idea. So how do sinful fallen uh, humans uh, seek to avoid this conclusion in their, whatever their, I, I, uh, you know, their, what their idol tells them? Well, Paul says that they suppress the truth, and we've already kind of seen this, right. right? That's what they do. That's what reductionism accomplishes. So reductionism, we might say, is a truth suppression method, right? <laughs> it allows us to suppress the truth. <clears throat> Excuse me. It denies one or more dimensions of human nature so that the evidence from human nature no longer points as clearly to the biblical God. And whew, I can breathe a sigh of relief right. because now I don't have to, you know, deal with God. Yeah. Right? So, th- so think about if, if, if you want to talk about how does the, how does the sun move around the earth? And you say, well, I, I, I know how it moves during the daytime, so I'm only going to choose the parts when I see the sun, and I'm going to completely throw out all the all, all the times where we don't see the sun. Hmm. Well, okay, but that's a, that's a big part of the equation, <laughs> and so we're reducing kind of the known elements of 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 what we should be wanting to explain by coming up with this all encompassing worldview, uh, and 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 again supplanting Christianity as mm-hmm. as a as a kind of a tell all, uh, you know, what we should all live by. Uh, you know, so if we do that, we're 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 undercutting um, our 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 own method as well as kind of the, our truth statements when we say the world is like this. Right. The, the sun never sets. <laughs> if you throw out the times where the sun does set, right, so. right. So we we've, we've reduced the world to something like this, right? And so she gives us a couple of metaphors here to help us to to see this, right? The first one has to do with a box. She says if reductionism is like is like trying to stuff all of reality into a box, right? Uh, We could say that the problem is that the box is always too small, right? And so idols deify some part of the created order, but no matter which part they choose, a part is always kind of sticking out of the box, right? It's uh, a part is always too limited to to explain the whole. The universe is too complicated, and so we have stuff sticking out of the box. So uh, Daffy Duck or Three Stooges, you could imagine them trying to stuff something in the box and it always spilling out, and they finally get the lid on, and they let it go, and then they look away and it all spills out again. <laughs> so if your worldview does not account for the stuff that's sticking out of the box, if it only accounts for the stuff that's in the box, what do you do with the stuff that's sticking out of the yeah. box? Well, what she tells us is they eliminate it. Yeah, cut it off. That's right. It really doesn't exist, <laughs> right? She says uh, they eliminate those dimensions of reality that would falsify their worldview. And she says you can make any worldview appear successful uh, simply by denying anything that does not fit in the box, right? So you cut it off, you get rid of it, and um, and there you have it, right? So you're you're you are able to hold on to your worldview. She gives us another metaphor to help us with this, right? She says to switch metaphors, philosophers sometimes picture the dichotomy using the image of two store a two story building. Right. So you have the upper and the lower story. Reductionists try to live in only one story. For example, materialists try to live strictly in the lower story of the building, the material universe. They treat matter and energy as the only things that are real, knowable and objective true. The upper story, then, she says, becomes a sort of attic where they toss all the stuff that doesn't fit into their materialistic worldview, right? The soul, the spirit, the mind, morality, freedom, God, all those types of things are just thrown in the upper story in the attic, and we kind of eliminate those, we ignore those, explain them away, and that kind of stuff. Christmas tree, the the exercise bike, yeah. (laughs)